Hi, this is Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Thank you so much for joining us today for Live with Annie. As usual, we've started the stream a bit early. This helps us get everything set up and broadcasting properly to our various platforms. You can find a countdown clock on the screen showing how long it will be until we actually go live. While you wait, please connect with us and other viewers in the chat. Let us know where you are from and whether you're a new or longtime viewer. We'll see you live soon. Again for joining us for Live with Annie. We are so happy to have you with us today. While you wait for the program to start, we hope you'll enjoy the content playing on screen. There's so much inspiration, so take a moment to tell us what you love in the chat. Don't forget there is a countdown clock on the screen so you know how long until we go live.
Hi, it's Annie again reminding you that we'll be going live with this week's episode shortly. There is a countdown clock on the screen showing how much time is left. You've got just enough time to grab some water or a beverage of your choice and a snack and to connect with us in the chat. We'd love to hear what you've been working on this week. It's Annie, back to remind you that we'll be starting this week's live very shortly. We've got a really fun episode planned for today, and we'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 23 of season three of Live with Annie. Today we are visiting with Stephanie Organis, a new designer for Andover Fabrics. We'll talk with Stephanie about her background, how she became interested in designing fabric, her creative process, and more and will showcase her latest line, Wandering, which is just hitting stores. So stay tuned. We are so happy that you're all here with us today. We know there's lots of things you could be doing with this time, and it really means a lot to us when you make the time to join us. If you enjoy these episodes, please take a minute to follow us wherever you are watching us. And if you know someone else who you think might enjoy the information that we share, please tell them about Live with Annie. The easiest way to do that is to just tag them while you're watching. That will take them straight to the episode and they can watch it too. Also, we love reading your comments, so please be sure to interact with us throughout this presentation. Tell us what you think about Stephanie's new fabric, share your tips and tricks, and tell us the projects that you're working on. We want to know what you think and we really like learning from you too. And if you've got any questions as we go, please leave them in the comments or chat and we will do our best to answer them before we close. Last week we showed some really fun projects that we made using Tim Holtz's upcoming fabric line, Color Block. It includes colorful blocks in various sizes printed on both cotton and canvas. We shared tips for sewing on the canvas 
and for choosing coordinating fabrics and supplies to go along with color block. If you missed it or want to watch it again, remember that you can find all the previous 123 episodes of Live with Annie on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, or at byannie.com. And we'll put up all the links to make them easy for you to find. I'm going to take a quick drink before we get started today. All right, as I said, today we are visiting with Stephanie Organis, a new fabric designer for Andover Fabrics. Stephanie is a graphic and surface designer with a background in advertising who lives in Mexico with her husband and two small children. She is a beauty seeker at heart and loves all things pretty. Her whimsical fabric collections reflect her sensibility and love for color and are inspired by her culture and love of nature. Please help me welcome Stephanie Organes. Hi, Annie. Thank Hello. you for having me. Thank you so I'm much so for happy coming. To be here. Did I pronounce your name right? I forgot to ask when we were talking earlier. No, it was perfect. Stephanie right. Organis. It was perfect. <laughs> perfect. All right. Gloria had told me, because Gloria's from Spain, and so she had kind of said, okay, this is how you would pronounce it, but that's been a month ago, and I didn't know if I'd remember. So good. I'm glad <laughs> it, I got it at least close. So anyway, we are it really happy. We are really happy to have you here all the way from Mexico City. I'm excited to um, learn some more about your background and your design process, and I can't wait to tell people more about your new fabric line and some of the projects we made. But before we get into that, I'd love it if you would start by telling us just a little bit about yourself, your family, and where you live. Yeah, sure. Well, first of all, thank you, Annie, for inviting me. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. I'm so excited. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, well, as you said, my name is uh, Stephanie Organes. I'm, uh, I live in Mexico City, but I'm from Guadalajara. I grew up there. And um, well, I, I can tell you that since I'm a, a, I was a child, I remember myself always drawing, um, like very creative since I was little. Um, and well, yeah, I, I live in Guadalajara and then I married my high school sweetheart. And then, uh, well, we moved to Mexico City and well, we live now here. We have two small children. I'm gonna show you. I think I have a picture here. Oh, they're um, so cute. My daughter, she's six and my little one, he's, he's four. And, and yeah, well, we live here now. We have, we have been living in Mexico City for, I think, uh, 15 years now. Yeah, quite, quite a bit, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and I was surprised when I talked to you the other day, we live in the desert Southwest and it's so hot here, like we're gonna yes. be 109 today. And I just assumed Mexico must be even hotter, but you said, no, it's a really temperate climate and much, much cooler there. Yeah, Mexico City, Guadalajara is pretty much hot, but here in Mexico City, like right now it started, uh, raining already so it's it's pretty i love it because it's like chilly at times and and hot in the afternoon so it's i think we have the the perfect weather in mexico city <laughs> that sounds awesome so you had said that you um have drawn since you were little were your parents artistic too and creative and did you get any formal art training as you went through life yes um I think uh, like my mom, she really encouraged me since I was little, like she, she's, uh, I think I got it from her because she's very artistic, like she always liked to paint and she did for a while like design landscaping, like um, gardens, for gardens. And also uh, yeah, she does like all these kinds of crafts, like she, she likes, uh, she used to make like all the, the ones that were on trend, like painting on fabric and uh, she made like all our costumes and she was very, she is very crafty. So I think I got it like from her and, and like my parents, she always, they always encouraged me like to follow my, my creativity and they encouraged me like when I wanted to study design that they were okay with it. And so, yeah, I think I, I got it from there. And, and yeah, my, my, I study uh, graphic design, but when I graduated from, from high school, I took a year off, like I studied abroad in, in Italy, in Florence. So this year for me, it was like super 
uh, decisive, decisive, yeah, like it, it changed my life because I, I was uh, be, between studying uh, graphic design and advertising. And when I went to Italy, I like everything changed. Like I studied there art history and drawing and painting and well, and Italian. So after that, like all this inspiration and Europe has like so much art and everything. So yeah, when I went back to Mexico, I decided that definitely I wanted to study design. So I went to university for graphic design. And during my career, I took, a, I studied uh, for a year in London and that also like but like all the creativity like exploded in my mind like london is is amazing so so yeah that's how i have like all my my background in 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 design and when well i went back to guadalajara i graduated and then i that's when i moved to mexico city and started working in advertising and in packaging design that's that's what i did as a that's how my professional career started Wow, you've had, it sounds like you made some really good decisions along the way and had some really great experiences too. I can't even imagine studying in Italy for yeah. a year. That had to be really, really exciting. So I'm curious yeah. to know, how did you go from advertising and package design to designing fabric or do you still do both of those? No, I, I just do fabric design now. Um, well, like all my quilting journey, I'm gonna, you how it started <laughs> uh after working for a while in well in advertising my husband he studied in in the u.s uh, a master's degree so we moved to the uh, the u.s and then just for a couple of years and then when we came back i was not working anymore and i i become um, became a mom for the first time and and yeah so i was like fully committed to my baby <laughs> so at the beginning like for the first months i think i i really think i got like baby blues like i i i started like struggling a bit because i like i have always been like very like creative and i always wanted to do things and and i mean i was super happy to to be a mom because that was something that i wanted like for so long uh but i think i needed like this creative part like uh like also i missed kind of my career and doing like a creative outlet and so i started like searching to to do something new like to learn a new skill uh while still being being a mom so um like one of my like i always take my took my daughter like outside and and walk around and there's this beautiful shop like near my home here in mexico city uh but i was never like like I always felt afraid to go, like to learn to sew. And this was a quilt shop and I was like, I was not sure if this was something for me. Um, but well, at the end I, I I went in and I took my my first sewing class and, and really that changed my life. Like like I, I, like I felt like a new world opened for me because I, I started like to creating new things. I like, I always been afraid of the sewing machine. I was like, no, that's, that's difficult. I, I don't know. I was, and, but after that, I, I really, I really love it. Like I started, you know, like buying all this fabric and started learning on, on YouTube. I also found you Annie on Craftsy. I took, I took, I have still some of your courses. And, um, and from there I started, what I like to do the most at the beginning was uh, bags. I started doing pouches like a lot of pouches and bags for uh, first for myself, like for my diaper bag and to organize like all the things for my baby. And from there, I, I created uh, my own brand called Pretty Please. And um, yeah, and I started like selling all these bags and in craft fairs and online. And uh, yeah, that's how, how my, my brand started, Pretty Please. And, and well, after that, uh, well, I kept on, on sewing. I, well, then I was, I had a second baby. That's when my little boy was, was born. And uh, then I went to Quilcon. That was the last Quilcon before the pandemic in Austin. I went to Austin, it was 2020 in February. So after that, like I came back home like this, like you know with my head exploding full of ideas of all the things that i wanted to do when when i came back home and then the pandemic hit so it, i mean really like quilting and sewing like really 
like it, it saved me during the pandemic because as as they everybody said like quilting is is your ter therapy like for me it really it really was like i kept on uh, like i was homeschooling and and in the night i was always like sewing 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 and taking courses online and, and yeah like learning and from there i like i started like well, I'm a designer and, and what I've always been drawn to is to fabric, like to the patterns and everything. And then, and that's when I, like, I realized that there's people behind all these fabrics that we love. And I was like, like, maybe I can start like drawing and designing my own. So uh, during the pandemic, I, I took a course of creating collections uh, from the university that I studied in London, in Central San, Mar San Martins. They made this course online so I started studying that. So it was amazing. I was like, I wanted, I have so many ideas and other things that I wanted to do. And, but in the, like, I think like God have different plans for me at that moment <laughs> because I, I had like a, a really like health issue. And I started like with, um, like kind of with, with, um, pain in, in a leg, but in, in one of my legs and, and, but it was in the middle of the pandemic and, and we were like super, like we didn't go out at all. And, and I was like, I don't want to go to the hospital. And, but after a few days, I was like feeling super bad. I, I couldn't walk anymore. And, and well, long story short, I have like a, a like a serious um, uh, thrombosis and um, I got like three surgeries. And from there, like I'm telling you all this because for me, this was like really, like an eye opening, like I, I see the pandemic and, and all that happened, like a really like, like for me as a blessing, because this was like, uh, like an opportunity for me, like to, to take away, uh, take away like fears and things that I was holding back. Uh, and, and that's when I said, okay, I'm gonna like keep doing, keep drawing. Like I wanted to sew more, create more, draw more, uh, after what happened, like I have, like a month of recovery, my kids, my in-laws took my kids uh, to Guadalajara so I can recover here in Mexico City with my husband. And so that was a month that I recovered and I started like drawing, drawing, drawing. And, and yeah, and I kept on studying. I found uh, the surface design and that's how I, I really got immersed. And, and it, I like I discovered this passion for 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 designing fabric and started like creating my own collections, printing them on, on spoon flower. And I took several courses and, and yeah, I started doing like all my samples, uh, creating my own fabric and, and spoon flower. So that's my whole story as, as how I wow. started. <laughs> That is really an amazing story. And, and I, I loved the progression of becoming a mom and needing to do something creative and learning to quilt and then COVID and everything that happened with that. I am so glad you got to the hospital. I can imagine because we all were we were trying to stay away from those places. And and, you know, no. when you've got something <laughs> life threatening like that happening at some point, you finally have to say, all right, I got to go. And and, you know, how fortunate, yeah. <laughs> too, that you had uh, people to take care of the kids. But I really appreciate mm -hmm. uh, you sharing that story with us and for reminding us of those important lessons. Because, you know, learning to listen to your body when or when the, even the universe is telling you to slow down and to keep creating and overcome your fears and do what you love. Those are those yeah. are awesome lessons for anybody in life. And I loved hearing Thank about you. the class that you took in fabric design. And I wondered if you have any other tips for someone who might be interested in pursuing their dreams for a creative life. If somebody's interested in fabric design, because I know we've had people um, say before that they were, can you recommend any particular classes or teachers that maybe aren't part of a university program? Yeah, sure. Uh, one of the well, I took took several courses, but like my favorite one, I took the, my first course that I took was uh, with Elizabeth Silver. Uh, it was all about surface pattern design and how to start, and she's amazing. Like she's like super uh, business driven, savvy. Like so, like she helped me really like overcome this imposter syndrome and like go for it totally and well that was with elizabeth silver another one that i took it was with bonnie christine that she's a fabric designer as well and 
I mean, she helped me, uh, like I have been using Illustrator all my life, like well, in my career, but uh, she helps you like she how to make a collection, how to make the repeat, like more technical, uh, like parts of the, of the design. So Bonnie, I mean, she's amazing and she has a great community. And also with Stacy, Stacy Bloomfield, that was another course that I took that it was called Leverage Your Art. And uh, Stacy Bloomfield, I mean, I love her because she's like so uh, authentic and she gives away like all her secrets or well, oh, yeah, she has a lot of tips on how to leverage your art and, and to keep on like using your art for more for more revenue streams. So yeah, those I recommend. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you for sharing those because it really is wonderful when people have the talent and the skill you know, and they have their own business, but then they're willing to help others explore and improve their talents too. That, I think that's one exactly. of the best things about the creative industry. I don't know that it exists in every industry, but I think in the sewing and crafting industry, people are really generous with sharing what they know. So that's really awesome. Yeah. And I'm sure mm -hmm. we have got people out there now who are thinking, I really would love to do that, but where do I get started? So I'm wondering, could you share a little bit about your creative process with you and, and you know, kind of how you start and, and how it progresses through the, pro through the stages? Yes, yes. Well, my creative process, like I, well, I, I take inspiration a lot, like from first my my culture, like in Mexico City is well, Mexico in general. Mexico is like very colorful, so I think I I have like a lot of influence from from my from my country, and uh, and also like from traveling. That's how I get a lot of inspiration, like from the rocks in in the hotels and going to the museums and visiting also other quilt cool shops, like all that helps me like to build this. Uh, like if you see my phone, I have tons of pictures. Like I, I go to all the uh, botanical gardens. I, I take a lot of inspiration from there. And and well, how I start, like uh, when I create a collection, like I start mostly brainstorming a theme uh, that I want to like to work on and it's like having different concepts and ideas. And from there, uh, like once I have a, like a main theme, I, I think always like in my, like the hero patterns of, of my collections. And I start like drawing, like I do everything by hand, like uh, in pencil, I like to draw uh, for like sketch, sketch everything on, on, I have here, I wanted to show you some of my, I hope you can see them because everything's on, on pencil, but uh, I don't know if you can see, but yeah. you can well, see that. I start, I start everything on pencil and then I digitize it like uh, sometimes in, in Procreate. And from there, I, I go to Illustrator and like I draw tons and tons of, of motifs. And from there, I, I start playing with color and doing like all the, the patterns with the, the repeat. And uh, usually uh, we ha we work in nine or 10 prints per collection. So I do first those, like the nine main prints. And from there, I start playing for in the different colorways. We always have like three colorways. Uh, so that's the part that I love the most, like playing with all the color and everything once I have like all the, the designs. But um, but yeah, that, that's how I, I usually, I, I work. That's that's really awesome. I love hearing about how that all flows. Kind of, it's kind of very similar to writing a pattern, coming up with an idea and then just gradually, you know, working on it step by step, making a prototype, which is kind of like your sketches, and then starting to write the actual instructions for how to doing it. it and I can yeah. definitely see from looking at your fabrics that your influence of nature and your culture really comes through on on it, this line of fabric. So once you've come up with those designs, <laughs> what's your process for getting them out in the world? How did you find a fabric company to produce them? I know that Andover is, has produced this one and the next one that's coming soon. So how did your relationship with them come about? Well, when I when I started designing my own collections and I made like I print all my collections first on Spoonflower, I started making different samples. I made I made uh, my portfolio, and I pitched my portfolio to them. Like I send all my my samples, and they and they just like it. And, and yeah, we started uh, working together. 
and and yeah and from there uh yeah that like all my collections are, are coming out with them with them now so I'm curious, when you said you sent them all your samples, do you do that right at the beginning or do you pitch them first and then when they, they show some interest, then you send the, the model or the samples or do you send it all at once? Ah, okay. No, first when I send like all the samples, that was just like for my portfolio so they can see my work and that's how they, they like now I'm part of their, of their designers. Uh, but now that I that I'm doing collections with them, like I I just um, pitch the idea to them, like the whole collection, uh, and it's amazing working with Andover. I, I really love them. They're they're the best because they're like really respectful of your of your work. They like they are they let the designer um, propose and 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 what I design is what you see. Like they actually like I. I give them like the whole collection and then from there we start working. I mean, we make adjustments of color and scale, but they have an amazing team. So like really work, we work like hand on hand and and, and it's amazing because it's uh, like they, they, well, so far, like the two collections that I have show them, they, they like them. So it, it's, it's been great. Like I, I show the whole collection and, and, and yeah, and from there we start working but they don't make like lots of changes is, I don't know, I, I love them and over it's great. <laughs> I love with. them too. We've worked with Daryl for a long time and Nelson yeah. and they're just fabulous. So I'm really glad to know that, yeah, that you best. found a home with them. And I was curious to know how much autonomy you have as a designer. It probably depends on the designs, but you know, when you've got such a beautiful collection, they're happy to have have you just do it all and, mm. and say yes 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 we want all of it so i'm curious to <laughs> yeah, know about the time frame from when you submit a design to ha to having the actual fabric in the stores can you give us an idea of how long that takes yeah yeah it it takes a bit of a time uh, <laughs> you have to be patient as a designer because you I mean, you make the collection that one you wanted to see see it next month, but it takes a couple like eight to nine months. Like if I submit a collection maybe in December, I start to see they send me like the first strike offs. Like the strike offs are like the small samples, so you can see that the color is correct and the scale and everything is like, just to check like everything is is okay. Like they send the first strike ups maybe it was in May. Like I sent wandering wow. in December and the first strike ups, yeah, I, I I got them in May and then yeah from May after you approve them and everything is okay, uh, they send like the first five yards so I can start doing samples until it was I think it was May or June, a little bit. No, the strike ups were in March, and the and the samples were in around May, and and yeah, and and now the and the fabric is coming out just now in July. So, July. Yeah, it, it takes a long time. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's hitting stores just right now. So, yeah, you have to be patient when patient when you design fabric. Fabric. It's kind of like having yeah. a baby. You know, it's like. From the time exactly. you get pregnant until it comes out, but sometimes that's exactly. good. It gives you a little time to prepare because, like you said, it gives you time to get your samples made, the patterns written. It gave us time to get some models made, and that's one thing that's nice for us is getting the fabric. Probably we got it, I would guess we got it in May also, and that mm -hmm. gave us the ability yeah. then to have models made that we could share with Daryl and Nelson when they did the H&H &H show. Um, so exactly. th so that's really helpful to have that little bit of time in there. And then, you know, when when stores are ready to start selling it, I'm, I'm doing a Zoom um, with a store in Connecticut tomorrow, Carton Candy Fabrics. And uh, yes. we, we met this I'm morning. I'm to visit to it next month. It, it, it sounds like a great story. I want to visit there, too. We're going to talk about them more later. But she was really excited to see the fabric or these models on the table because she said, we just got the line. And she said, I, I know people will love seeing what you've made with it. So that's really awesome. And yeah, we are really appreciative to everybody, you know, designers and fabric companies who um, let us work with your beautiful designs. So let's talk now a little bit about this new line, Wandering, which is your first yes. collection with Andover. We made a number of projects, as I said, but before we show those, I would love it if you would show us the fabrics in the line and um, tell us a little bit more about your inspiration for each of them. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, wondering, I have here the fabrics I want to show you. Like this collection, like it really came like from a dream come true of becoming a fabric designer. So so for me, I wanted, well, I lo love all things floral and, and I wanted to be like a very happy collection. Um, it has like a, a lot of flowers and foliage and, uh, and geometrics, butterflies. It has like from big, uh, like very big and bold flowers to tiny, tiny ones. And, um, and yeah, I wanted also like a, um, a fresh color palette. So I have a lot of pinks and purples and teals and masters and, and well, I'm going to show it to you. Um, let me, I have here. Wait. First, if you want, I can show it to you like this so you can see like the whole, so people can get to see like the whole look of it. Let me, I don't know. Like there are a lot of flowers, poppies, marigolds, dogwoods. Um, now let me show you the fabric. I, I have it here already. So this is the, the main print of the collection, the hero print. Uh, that comes like in mustard and, and purples. And this is like a blush or little like light pink. This is like the, like the main print of the collection. And then we have this ones. These are the mar marigolds. And the collection it has twenty. It has twenty seven. Uh, it's twenty seven fabrics, but there are nine prints. Nine prints in in three colorways. But one of the blenders have like four colors, so that's why it's twenty. No, it's not twenty seven. Sorry, it's twenty twenty eight prints. And let me show you. These are the dogwoods. If you see it from there, I have to get used to that. The camera is like <laughs> <laughs> backwards. <laughs> yeah, it's backwards. So it's it's funny. So, so these are the dogwoods. And then we have butterflies. Let me show you. Well, butterfly or moths. I love that you did the butterflies in a, a real geometric kind of pattern instead because of the floral being so whimsical and all over. It was nice to have that little bit of structure with the butterflies. Exactly. I wanted to have like here I have like this kind of diamonds like to have. Yeah, like more geometric in the collection. So it, it balances it. So it's not I mean, because I, I think my style I like. Like I'm very maximalist. <laughs> like I love to have a lot of things. So I think this this works. These are like old blenders, and also this ones. I love this one. It has like all line work and geometric shapes, and this one comes in four colors, like this. I hope you get to see it. That's a really good one for us to use for the coordinating fabric for handles and straps yes. and bindings and things. Yeah, it, it help you rest your eye. Like. After seeing like all the florence and and you all the florals and you use this one like it, it balances everything I think right. like when you match them, and then we have this like foliage. I guess and you can tell like I love like pinks and purples like those are my colors like. <laughs> They're so pretty, so pretty. And this okay. one's a confetti one. This is this one was fun to make because this was like real confetti and I just like took a picture and vectorized it and and this is a great blender because it looks like a solid but it gives you like a, a little bit of texture. Like the white one you cannot see it, but it has like pink uh, pink, in it, yeah. pink confettis. And this one, the, these ones are like really small flowers. Uh, let me see. I think you can see it something a little bit there. And that, that's that a I'm great one for a lining. <laughs> yes. Like these two are my backgrounds, like uh, like the these two. Let me see. Oh, let me show you like this. It's hard to. That looks good. Yeah, you can see it. Light. Yeah. So, well, these are like all the, the prints in the collection. And for every collection, we have like a free free pattern, a free quilt. So this is mine, the one 
on the back. Uh, yeah. This is my, this is the wandering quilt. That, that That's a free pattern that you can download from my website and also from Andover's. And for this, this is called the wandering quilt. But for this quilt, what I wanted, I, I wanted like to be like a very beginner friendly quilt and it's based like it has, it's just one main block. It's the Ohio star and it has like half square triangles in, in the corners. And I mean, I, I love that it can be like really scrappy. It uses like all the, all the prints in the collection and it's like fat quarter friendly. And the way it works is like kind of, kind of in a gradient. And I wanted like all the light to be like centered in here, like all the concentration of light comes in here. Like it, it's it's very easy and simple to make, but I think it has a lot of, of impact when you mix and match the, the colors. And here you have like the background, you alternate like this one with this one, the, like the, the backgrounds that, the two that I show. So it gives you like a little bit of, of texture. And then I have to, I have it quilted. This one is cool. I don't, you can appreciate the, the quilting, but uh, one of my friends at my guild, Veronica, she, she did this amazing job at quilting it. I wanted it to be like something more organic because like it has a, like a lot of points. And so I wanted like, like more of waves and, and she made like, it has these, these like circles. Nice. So those are, that's a quilt for the collection. That is and just beautiful. Thank you. And it was so much fun to, to make it. When I make it, I mean, it's my first collection. I was just amazed, like enjoy, uh, uh, enjoying each block and, and yeah. So I hope a lot of people would like to make it and, and send me the pictures when, when they create their own quilts. Uh, let me show you some of the projects that I have. Uh, my friends and my guild helped me sew some of these. This is this is one of your patterns, Annie. This is the all all. It's called all aboard train. Yep, I recognize and that. I, the small size. Yes, I I love this because it's super uh, practical and it. I mean, like you can put here like all your uh, things for you when you go to a retreat or even like a makeup case. Like I love it. Like one of my friends, uh, her name is Carmen. She made this one for me. Very and nice. what I love about this pattern is actually we made this with the strike cups that I have and I just have left just a few pieces and and she was like no just give me little scraps and 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 you don't need much fabric to I, I was surprised of, of how she she made it with mixed with and matched scraps. I love that yes. that's <laughs> such a fun I mean, idea yeah it's cute know, like that I too know. exactly yeah. and that's what we have of fabric so it was perfect Right. So this is one, and the other one that I wanted to show you, let me see, the other one is, I was going to show you this one. This is, this is called the All Things Toad. This is by Knot and Thread. Uh, it's a Knot and Thread Kate. pattern. Yeah, and, it, yeah, and, and it has um, uh, the soft and stable inside. So this one was also, Veronica made it for me and, and she added like, look at this. That's this, so fun. This is so cute. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I love here, you can see here of the contrast. I, I love this. Like you have like all the BC fabric here and you have the blender here. So I think it works, it works great. That's really nice. Yeah, cute. Yeah, and, and it, it carries a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then from there, I think I was going to show you this one. This I have. This is an iPad case that I made for for myself, and this is a pattern that I want to release. Uh, that is releasing soon, uh, and yeah, it has also the collection also made with soft and stable, and it's great. Like for your iPad, I have like uh, yeah, the iPad. Nice. I love the patchwork yeah. on the front too. That's that's really yes. pretty. That's really great way to yes. use a leftover nice. block. Exactly. And I did like a hand quilting, like a little nice. bit in here. So yeah. was that one of the blocks from your quilt pattern or is that a totally different block? No, it was, it was, it was totally different. Like Got it. I did this with uh, strike ups before uh -huh. I started doing the, the quilt, but yeah, I, I love stars. That I think yeah. that's my favorite block. <laughs> so I would agree. I really like stars too. And then another one that I wanted to show you, it was this one. 
these are like some small pouches. I mean, there are a lot of things that you can do with a with a collection. I think that it has like a lot of opportunity. I like this ones, and let me see. And I have this one. That the the quilt shop that made it that um, that I mentioned before that is called Quilt de Arte. That it's my favorite shop here in Mexico City. They helped me make this one. Oh, that's pretty. I love. I love how they applique the, the flowers. They cut the flowers and they're like all embroidered. Nice. And then did patchwork um, on the back. That's fun. Yeah, exactly. And they, they made also this embroidery hoop, like also like with different stitches. And yeah, I think so it's a fun So they, they fussy cut parts of the fabric and applique them on there yes. for that. Oh, that's clever. Exactly. That is uh -huh, a really clever exactly. idea. I wouldn't have thought of that. I love that. Yeah, I mean, we if you have leftovers of the fabric and like a flower or something, I mean, you can use like every scrap you have left. So yeah, those That's, are the projects that I have. <laughs> those are really fun. And, and I have really enjoyed following you on Instagram and the pictures that you were posting as you were working on the quilt, um, showing the blocks. It was really fun. And then to see yeah. it all come together. It's just a, a fun, fresh um, quilt and really pretty. And doing a scrappy... Thank you look isn't always easy but you really i love how you did the lights and then going into the darks so that was really fun well the other thing that Thank we you. really liked is the way you had all the different scales and the different values in it because that makes it easy to combine them for a lot of projects so i thought real quickly i would just um, show you some of the things we made so the first project that we, we decided on right off the bat was this ultimate travel bag and as soon as we saw this large floral we immediately thought of travel bags. And so the first one we made was this ultimate travel bag. And so we used the, the mustard um, floral. We used the green kind of more solidy for the handles. And then I think we used the pink and the dogwood. Yeah, the pink dogwood for the lining. Oh, I love that. I need to it's, make that one. I need mean, my travels. <laughs> you do. Amazing. This is such it. a great bag for travel. And you know, people who who make this, I've had people make this who've never even sewn before. So it's not a hard bag to make and, and you just feel so accomplished when you're done. So we also yeah, thought these kind of solidy prints, a lot of times we'll use them for handles and straps, but occasionally we like to use them um, for the outside of a bag. So here's a set of flipping out that we made and we use the confetti for the outside on the small one. This is a perfect little bag for carrying your rotary cutter, your tools, you know, your markers and things. And then the big one, it, we did the butterflies on with the um, small flower on the inside. It's great because you, it's tall enough that you can fit your yarn and your big needles in it, but you can also fold it down and have it really easy to access when you um, need to. The other one that it's we amazing. made- It's amazing, I love that they stand up stand up and don't fall over huh yeah they're yeah, really nice amazing. and i love that then you just zip it up and throw it in your bag and everything's nice and contained my daughter-in-law makes these a lot of times for gifts and she puts a, a vinyl lining on the inside or slicker and then she puts a toothbrush and toothpaste in it and it's perfect ah, gift for kids to you know when they travel to carry their carry everything when they go and it's easy when you're traveling to set it in the bathroom and have easy access to what yeah. you need so we also Nothing. thought that this line would be really nice for home deck stuff so the next thing we made was a set of our room with a view bins um, and so this is the small one that we made with the gold dogwood we used the purple as the coordinate on it and it's got a window so you can see what's inside. We put a mesh lid in the top. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's the little one. The big one, or the medium one and the big one are back here. So the, the medium one, we did the butterflies. Wow. And it's perfect if you're a knitter. You can see we've oh got God. lots of yarn in there and knitting needles and projects. We used the other floral in the really white mm -hmm. for the lining. So these are really pretty when you look at them sitting on a shelf, if they're empty, you know, you get to really see the lining on these. Mm -hmm. So this is the medium one. And they're so the pretty, honey. I Thank want them you. all. <laughs> <laughs> and then for the large one, we did the, the um, 
the hero wow. print again in the white, and we use mm -hmm. the orange for the for the um, binding and coordinates. So on each of these, we tried to use the same fabric for the coordinate to kind of tie them together, but we used a different colorway to match the fabric we used for the outside for each one. So we've got kids' toys mm -hmm. in here. These are fabulous for organizing a playroom, and the kids can put everything that you know is all over the floor in yeah. one place, and, and they're easy to carry around. It's got a handle on the top and handles on the sides, and my grandson has like, I don't know, eight or ten of these. My, my daughter-in-law wow. really appreciates, appreciates it because it helps keep the house a little bit cleaner. <laughs> so yeah, as, I said, <laughs> as I said earlier, we got this fabric in about June, and we had planned to, because we were going to the show at H&H, &H and we knew Andover were going to be there too, we had planned to make some of our new patterns um, using the mm -hmm. Wandering. And we did, but then we decided to hold the patterns. So, um, but I want to show you what we made. So you're going to get a little sneak peek at some of the yeah. patterns that we will be releasing in October. So one of them that I am really excited about is called Payday. And this makes wallets or clutches or a bag. We've got carrying straps for each of them too. So if you wanna carry it over your shoulder or cross body. Uh -huh. But they're simple and easy to make. They each have a slip pocket on the back where you can put your keys or your phone if you want to get to it really quickly. And then they have a magnetic flap that closes. And when you open it, there's a big deep pocket back in the back that has some credit card pockets inside. Mm -hmm. And then there's a little slip pocket here, which on the large one is the perfect place for your phone. Actually, I think my phone fits even in the small one. And then there's two zippered pockets here. So lots of places to put everything that you need to carry in a wallet. And we did two sizes. So this one fits really good in another purse. This one is a little bit bigger and perfect to carry just on its own. So we did the white oh, yeah, print the for the lining and we tried to keep the outside on these a little more muted and we did the more yeah. solidy for those. So it looks amazing when you open it. Yeah, yeah, it really it really is bright and cheery. We made sure to use the yeah. same fabric. I mean, people can do whatever they want, but we designed it so that you use the same fabric for everything on the bottom so that when you close the the top Mm -hmm. You know, you don't see that white sticking out. It looks the same all the yeah. way around. We did, we made a couple where we didn't do that, and it, it makes it a little bit more challenging to make sure that you don't see that. So that's called Payday. Mm -hmm. Then um, so the other new pattern that we did is called Courtside, and we, the one that we're making out of Wandering um, is still in construction. So I don't have that to show, but I do have one back here. That's going to be a bag for carrying pickleballs, and that's made with Libs Elliott's new line called mm -hmm. Rancho Relaxo for Andover. So yeah. we'll show that no more way. soon. The other one, then we did a couple of updated patterns. So Gloria needed a new lunch bag, and she uh, really liked the style of our out-to-lunch bag, but the small one wasn't big yeah. enough. So we did a second size. So this is going to be our out-to-lunch pattern. So if you're not a big eater and you just like carry a sandwich and you need an ice pack and a drink, the small one is going to be a perfect size for that. So the bag has the really thing I love about it, and I think it would make even a great purse, is it has zippers that go all the way down the side uh -huh. on each side and then little gussets on the sides so that things don't fall out. And then on one side, there is a slip pocket made out of mesh with fold over elastic. On the other side, a full height zippered pocket. And then there's deep pockets on each side, you know, for keys and things like that and easy handles to carry it. So that's the small one. And then the large one is, you know, the makings for a heartier lunch. So in here, we've got your thermos, you know, your chips, your sandwich or your salad, a second sandwich in case you're really hungry, and then room pockets for your snacks and your utensils and your napkins and all yeah. those things. So on this, what we did is we did kind of a solidy on the outside and, a, a, you know, the floral on the outside to kind of make a set that blends together but isn't exactly. So we used the hero print actually for the handles and bindings here, where normally we'd, we would do this in reverse like we did on the small exactly. one. Exactly. But um, we switched it up to give a little bit different look. 
So that is Out to Lunch 2.0. And get that amazing, honey. Then we also updated our um, Diddy Bags pattern. And so this has three sizes of bags in it. These are perfect for, you know, anything. Toiletries, mm -hmm. makeup, tech gear. And the nice thing about this, it's a, a little more masculine shape. So depending on the fabric you choose, you know, I think this would make a great toiletry bag or quick gift for a guy. Mm -hmm. So these use just a little bit of fabric. We changed the way the border is from the original pattern. So we made kind of a diagonal border that goes around from, mm -hmm. from one side to the next and just fun and simple to do. So those are ditty bags. And that's, I think, everything that we've got done so far. We still have some fabric left, actually a fair amount of fabric left. So we'll have some new things coming along and we'll okay. be sure and, and share pictures of those when we get them done. I understand that you also have another new line that was recently introduced. Can you give us a little sneak peek of it and talk about when it might be available for people to watch for in their stores? Yeah, sure. I. It's, it's going to be available and until January 2024. Um, okay. So I, I, I don't have strike-offs or anything, but I can show you the prints. Um, it's called Enchanted Bloom. This is a pattern for the collection. Oh, that's pretty. So, yeah, I wanted Very to... Very modern this looking. Is, this, this collection is... I want it to be like an... I was thinking of an like a like a garden, like an enchanted garden, and it has like a bohemian kind of style, I, I think. And this is, let me show you, like the hero prints. Let me see if you see there. The hero p prints are the the flowers and the and the swans. Nice. And it has a. Uh, like paisley, it has paisleys and plums, like uh, peacock plums ah, or feathers. Nice. And it has uh, like a lot of geometric diamonds, uh, like to balance the collection. I don't know if you can see it. And these are the, the century solids of, of Andover that we always like uh, have colors that go uh, with the collection, the, the, the solids. That's beautiful. Well, yeah, so this is just like a sneak peek because yeah, it's gonna be until until January. So we have. So to in January, it'll be in stores. Will they plan to announce that at fall market, probably? Yes, yes, yes. yes. I'm I'm, I'm gonna be in market uh, with this one, and hopefully by then we have maybe some strike up so people can actually see the fabric in. Great. life hopefully like, yeah hopefully yeah. we'll be able to get some fabric and we can make some models too so i look yes, at that i think that would be an ideal fabric for courtside because it's made with two main fabrics so i'm just gonna grab this off the wall so basically there's one main fabric that makes the body ah. but then the pockets we use a different fabric for and so i could ah, see yeah. those uh, those larger prints for those and then something more solid for the body of the bag so That'll be. That's so pretty. That'll be yes, fun. I'm I'll, excited to see it. I'll tell Daryl to put me on the list. I want to see some of that when yes. it's ready. So Stephanie, yes, this has been it. so much fun today. Thank you for sharing uh -huh. all your all your story and your wisdom. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot. I have a greater appreciation for what goes into designing a fabric. I know a lot <laughs> of love and attention goes into them. Um, can you tell us about how viewers can follow you on social media to see what's coming next and, and see what you've got now that's all new to them? Yes. Uh, well, the best way to find me, it's in my newsletter. In my, You can sign up in my, in my website. It's stephanieorganis.com. And also in social media, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. At, uh, it's at prettyplease.mx. That's and, and you right. can see it in the screen. <laughs> I understand, too, that you're working hard to promote quilting in Mexico and get younger people involved. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I'm, I'm um, well, with all of this, I mean, it, it, quilting in Mexico is, is growing and, and there are a few designers. Like, I, I really want, uh, like, people to to get more into, into quilting and into sewing, like, invite younger generations and mostly in Mexico, so people know what is quilting all about because it's it's pretty like 
Not a lot of people know about it. So I'm I'm with um we have our guild in Mexico, the Mexico Quilt Guild, and together we're trying to promote like mother quilting in Mexico. So so yeah, I hope like by doing all this and like it will inspire more people like to do or at least start qu like quilting and and sewing and and don't be afraid of the machine as I, as I was like of the sewing machine. <laughs> That is so worthwhile and such a such a good endeavor and so important. You know, in the U America, we have such a history of quilting. It's been around since, you know, the pioneer days. But you forget that not every country is that way. And I know, you know, we hear occasionally from people in Mexico wondering about stores who carry our products. And, and there just aren't a whole lot of even quilt stores in Mexico. So that's awesome that you're going to work to, to get people in, in that. And, you know, even in the U.S., we need to do better at getting younger quilters interested. So thank you yeah. for, for doing all that. We really appreciate it. Let's see before we close if um, any of our viewers have questions. Randy said, nope, no questions. We did a great job of explaining everything. <laughs> but thank you again for making the time to be with us. I really loved hearing all of your story. I can't wait to get my hands on Enchanted Bloom and see what you do next. And we will really look forward to seeing you in Houston in October at Quilt Market. So thank you so much yes. for joining us. And we will look forward to seeing you then, if not before. Thank you so much, Annie. This was so much fun. And I appreciate it so much for you to in inviting me. Thank you so much. And see you, yeah, in Houston. Sounds thank great. Bye-bye. Bye. That was such an enjoyable visit. I really enjoyed hearing about how Stephanie got started and seeing the story and all of her beautiful fabrics and projects. So remember, for all of you, ask for these fabrics, patterns, and supplies at your local quilt shops. They're such an important part of our sewing and quilting communities, and it's up to all of us to keep them strong and vibrant. If they don't have these products, they can certainly get them. The fabrics, they just need to go to Andover Fabrics and then the patterns and supplies, they can go to their favorite distributor or contact us directly. We are always happy to set up wholesale accounts for qualified stores, so just ask them to contact us and we'll get them all on the way. So before we close, let's move on to our featured local quilt shop of the week. Um, at Biani, we're all about supporting local shops and one of our favorite events each year is our local quilt shop contest, which we celebrate in February. During that contest, we invite people to vote for their favorite quilt shop and tell us a little bit about what makes them so special. And then to continue the fun and support of the stores throughout the year, each week we highlight a store or more and some of their voter submissions during Live with Annie. So this week we are visiting two stores, each of whom has or will have soon a Biani trunk show on display in their store. So we're going to start today in Jefferson, Ohio, to visit the regional winner for the state of Ohio, Alpha to Omega Quilting LLC. Tina, excuse me, Tina, owner Tina Raleigh tells us, I received the love of fabric and quilting from my parents. My mother, Ruth Bowser, taught me the piecing of the quilts, and my father, James Bowser, taught me the long arming. I have been using the long arm since 2010, and I have been totally hooked since then. I decided to open a brick and mortar shop in November of 2021. What a learning experience, but I am loving every moment of it. Alpha to Omega Quilting is located in historic Jefferson, the county seat of Ashtabula County, Ohio. Tina says, I'm a one woman show at this point with room for customers to gather with friends to sew. We offer a wide range of quality fabrics, notions, and patterns, as well as professional in-house edge-to-edge quilting services. I have two Nolting NV machines. One is 14 foot and the other is 12 foot to accommodate all sizes of quilts. The shop is open Tuesday to Saturday, nine to four. And anytime the shop is open, there is space to sit and sew. Customers who voted for Alpha to Omega Quilting in this year's contest praised the friendly, knowledgeable service and great selection. Deb wrote, the owner, Tina Raleigh, was raised with a family of meticulous, dedicated quilters. She continues this legacy and pride in all her amazing work, and her work is nothing short of perfection. This is her passion, and it radiates throughout her unique, quaint quilt shop. 
Not only does she stock traditional and the latest patterns, but also a wealth of knowledge she shares with others. Alpha to Omega Quilting has the most personal customer service I have ever encountered. I cannot say enough about this special shop. And Lisa agreed and added, Tina is not judgy and gives sound advice. She is more than willing to help and provide advice. Tina has impeccable judgment when it comes to fabric color choices or pattern advice. And Julie wrote, it may have started small, but it is growing. And not just in offerings, but also in activities. And it's the friendliest shop. Always the smiles, conversations, and help abound. So Alpha to Omega Quilting will have their Biani trunk show on display in the store from August 1st to the 31st, so starting next week. They are also participating in the All Ohio Shop Hop, which is August and September. And each participating shop in that will have exclusive All Ohio Shop Hop fabric. So be sure to stop in and check them out and tell them Annie sent you. All right, next we are traveling to Brookfield, Connecticut to visit Cotton Candy Fabrics and Quilts, who I talked about a little bit earlier. So the owner, Erin Byrne, has sewn since she was a teenager, and she has been quilting for 25 years. She leads a team of quilters, sewists, and creatives that are passionate about helping you find and finish your next quilt or sewing project. Erin believes that quilting is a unique hobby and that quilters get so much pleasure from creating beautiful and functional items for others. She says she can't think of another hobby or art form that is so generous and giving in nature. And I really thought that was really true. And I think that's one of the things I love about it too. Cotton Candy Fabrics has been in business since 2018, having gone through three expansions in the last five years. In addition to constant retail expansion, Erin has continually expanded the product offering to be Connecticut's most complete quilt store offering everything you need for bag making, quilting, apparel sewing, machine and hand embroidery, and more. And in addition to 5,000 square feet of shopping, they have a robust website and ship orders twice a day, six days a week. Cotton Candy Fabrics is a modern leaning quilt shop that offers something for everyone. With 8,000 bolts of quilting cotton, canvas, batiks, flannel, and apparel fabrics, there is something for everyone. The store is only five minutes off the highway and features amenities to enhance your shopping experience, including friendly and helpful staff, a coffee bar with always available refreshments, three restrooms, husband chairs, ample parking, and a state-of-the-art classroom with 12 sewing desks outfitted with Bernina 4 Series sewing machines, seven cutting stations, including a Martelli station, four ironing stations, including a Laura Star station, and design walls for every student. That sounds like an awesome store and classroom. Cotton Candy Fabrics is a retailer for Handy Quilter, Bernina, OESD, Laurel Star, and T Martelli. They are also a Superior Threads premier partner, so if you are looking for Superior Threads products, which may be hard to find, be sure to check them out. They carry over 8,000 bolts of fabrics, pre-cuts, notions, kits, and patterns. And Erin says they are proud to carry the full line of Biani.com patterns and notions with over 40 Biani bag patterns to select from. She explains, our shop is all about giving customers the belief to expand their creative skills. Prioritizing Biani patterns and notions allows us to teach and promote projects that are exceptionally well done and our customers will have fun making. I couldn't have said that better myself, so thank you, Erin. I enjoyed reading that. Key team members include Katie, Brian, and Rob, with Katie supporting customers with retail purchases, Brian handling inventory and getting the awesome merchandise ready for customers to buy, and Rob for handling the mailroom and the robust shipping operations as they ship twice a day. And Erin adds, we also have so many wonderful teachers that bring all their robust skills to helping our customers create successful projects. Customers who voted for Cotton Candy Fabrics and Quilts in this year's contest praised the store's great selection and service. Rika wrote, Erin and her team are great. The new shop is beautiful and so big. I got my quilt long-armed there and the result was beautiful. 
Erin helped me choose the design and thread. They are always extremely helpful. And Karen listed what she loves about the store, the fabulous collections of fabric, and most of all, the wonderful, knowledgeable, and caring people who really care about what I want and need. And Lee said, they carry everything. Plus, this shop truly makes me feel welcome. There are some stores that seem to only converse with their regulars. I live an hour from this place, so I don't get there often, but when I do, I feel like I'm in Utopia. The staff may not officially remember my face, but they treat me with all the kindness in the world anyway. I first visited during our state's shop hop. They catered it with awesome Mexican food, including margaritas. I would say that Cotton Candy knows how to do it up right. That really sounds like fun. So Cotton Candy is going to have a Biani trunk show on display in the store from tomorrow, July 27th, all the way until September 30th. And they are going to have a Biani booth at the Philadelphia National Quilt Show in September. So look for them there. This weekend, July 28th to 30th, they are going to be having their fifth annual Christmas in July celebration with shop specials, demos, and refreshments. And August 3rd, on August 3rd, they're having a special Be the Buyer event where customers can sit in with Erin as she meets with a Robert Kaufman rep and help determine future fabric coming to the stores. That sounds like a lot of fun. I've never heard of a store doing that before. I thought that was really clever. And they will be participating in the All New England Shop Hop during the months of September and October. So they are going to be busy. So be sure to stop in and check them all out. They sound like a happening place for sure. All right, thank you again to everyone who joined us today. We are going to be back next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Mountain Time with another inspiring episode of Live with Annie when we are going to talk about the importance of pressing. So we're going to cover everything from removing wrinkles to soft and stable to pressing during construction and once a project is complete. You aren't going to want to miss it. Also, I am headed to Alaska in August with my kids and grandkids to celebrate my birthday, so there won't be any Live with Annie episodes on August 9th or 16th. So be sure to catch us next week, and until then, happy stitching.